What's up gamers? Welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to be going over the best locations to shiny hunt dark type Pokemon. A lot of you asked for this, so here is the video on how to do it so you can get awesome shiny Pokemon like this. By the way, if you don't see a specific dark type Pokemon in this video, just know that they are going to be in another video if they do have a dual typing. Sometimes they make it in these videos, sometimes they don't, but they will be in one of the other videos in this playlist. All right, so for this video, what I'm going to be making is a sandwich uh, for the dark type. And for the dark sandwich, we're going to use a smoke fillet, a salty herba mystica, and a sweet herba mystica. That's that's what I'm using. Then you get title power level three, encounter rate level three, and sparkling power level three. If you want to specifically hunt mass shift, there is a very, very, very good spot. It's going to be located over here from Cortando East. You just want to move up right about there. And this entire area is going to be filled with mass shifts, as you can see. I'm just walking around here and we're just spawning in groups of them. You'll get sometimes a big group, a uh, family of them. They'll show up. It's just a very good spawn area. You look everywhere around you. You're going to see this dog. And what you're going to be looking for is a purple puppy that's your identification here and nothing else really spawns here under the purple sandwich so you just have to despawn out these pokemon and come back and it's just non-stop mastiff and you should easily be able to identify them because they will stick out like a sore thumb in this area very easily you'll notice it when that group does show up there's a there's a there was a group that just showed up there that i despawned out but yeah just walk around this area despawn pokemon in and out there's the family spot they spawned in there and just go in and out until you find your shiny i'm gonna be hunting my shiny here for sure so hopefully you guys get yours in this area if you're enjoying this video make sure to hit that like button and subscribe it helps out a lot and it tells me you guys are really enjoying this video make sure to comment down below what typing you want next we did cover this in our fire video but because this pokemon is really easy to spawn and can spawn by being a dark type we're gonna go over hound door and that's gonna be all over this cave this is gonna be in the area one the same cave you started off your journey with when you use your legendary pokemon at the start of the game and when you go to the bottom part of this cave we're going to get a lot of spawns here so as soon as we enter in here we'll be introduced to a lot more hound door spawns in here it should start showing up as we move up further the more open the better the spawn are so you'll be seeing these guys everywhere in here this is the place i like to hunt them because i don't have to worry about anything else spawning here besides hound doors and just look for a blue one when you get a shiny it'll be a very obvious blue color and they're everywhere in this cave so you can just simply walk away to despawn a group of them out and then come back again to spawn them back in but i just wanted to share this cave with people who don't know where to hunt just hound doors alone and they're level five which makes them very easy to catch so if you head over to medali west on this side you You'll notice uh, that's a lot of bombardiers. Um, yeah, there's a lot of bomb <laughs> bomb birds. What you want to do is simply just step back in here in Medali and then step right back out in the West Province Area 3 and just wait a bit. Don't rush it. Just wait a second. Let some of these spawns come in because there's there's a lot of them. Now, when you're hunting bombardiers, you basically just want to look for them without the color. If it's going to have a much more silver beak, it's going to be gray. You're going to see no red coloring on it. And the moment you identify that bird with no color, that's the one you're going for. You look for that ASAP and, and head towards that. So it shouldn't be too hard to identify and you just go step in and step out. And I've noticed the most success for the bird is going to be on the west entrance, right out, right outside of it. And you can see how many there are. I wouldn't be surprised if I spent the next uh, 30 minutes doing this. I'd probably get one pretty quick, but we got to keep making the, these videos. So let's keep moving on. And if we get a shiny, we get a shiny. That's a new shiny too. All right, well, we know where to come to shiny hunt for quick videos. If you want to hunt Murkrows at night, come back to the Medali spot that I talked about where you were going to get bombardiers because this is so easy to hunt these solo right here. At nighttime, they take up majority of the spawns here. There's your group of them. Look at these. Fans. There's just hordes of them. There's so many that spawn in this area. So it's a quick, simple town respawn at this Medali spot right over here at Medali West. And that's pretty much how you're going to be able to spawn a Murkrow pretty fast. It's pretty good. There's just groups of them. It's so easy. Yeah, nighttime's your shot at doing this right here. Medali resets, baby. My favorite thing to do. So I just ate a sandwich by Alfernada, and I realized that, you know what? If you're just going for a bird, this is pretty much a replication of outside Medali, and we found our shiny bird. So I guess this is adding to the video of Murkrows. That was that was pretty quick. This is literally the same thing as Medali. I prefer Medali, but if you want to come to the Psychic Town, I guess you could do your dual bird hunting here for the Dark Birds as well. If you stand by the most north part of Medali, we talk about this spot in a lot of our videos. It's facing this little tree area here, and you 
step out, you're going to have a couple of options here. You're going to have your bombardiers showing up. So those we talked about earlier, but we're also going to get a lot of other options. You're going to get Mabostiffs showing up with their babies, and you're going to be looking for purples here. Now, the solo Mabostiffs are not going to be Mabostiffs. Those are going to be Zoras, and Zoras are going to be hanging out and pretending they are the Pokemon, and you'll never see that they're going to be shiny. They're going to be solo Mabostiffs, and they spawn like crazy. They are all over the place. So anytime you see a solo Pokemon here, that is going to be a Zorua. If you see a family of Pokemon, those are going to be the natural ones. And you can see how many we're going to take out. If I send my Iron Valiant here, knock this one out. There we go. It's going to be <laughs> a Zorua. And it's going to keep happening over and over and wait. It doesn't want to fight it. Okay, that's how you identify the shiny. That is going to be a shiny, uh, a shiny Zorua. There we go. And it's shined, but that's not a shiny. And there is the shiny. Look at that nice blue color on that shiny. How cool is that? This is probably the coolest shiny to get in this video. Uh, this is going to be a very rare one, a very difficult one. And uh, if you're lucky like me, that's how you're going to get the shiny one to show up. And I'm not going to waste time here. Now, if you're hunting the regular Mabostiffs, those are going to be around the family spawn. So at this point, if you have your shiny Zoro, you can ignore the giant groups of just the Mabostas alone because those are all your Zoruas. And you're just going to look for families like that. Just like that. See how fast they spawn in? These are going to be your Mabostiffs and Mastiffs, and they're just going to be purple. So you can zoom past those guys real quick, despawn those out, and respawn them in. Getting families is always the best way of hunting in this game. So you could do that to hunt that Pokemon. And that's pretty much the three main dark Pokemon or four in this area. All right, welcome to the Sokorat Trail. And over here in Sokorat Trail, you'll be hunting down three specific Pokemon groups. It'll be the Honchkrows and Murkrows. You'll be hunting down Mabostiff and Mastiffs. And you'll be hunting down Zororark, which is going to be a very very difficult Pokemon. Now, the skunks are all going to form in families here, as you can see. And anything that's solo or off, these are going to be your Zororaks. And what Zororak likes to do is disguise as these other dark Pokemon when you do have the dark encounter sandwich. If you find a Mabostiff by himself, that means it's going to be a Zororak. So they're very easy to identify. So if I run up to here and look at this guy, that is going to say Zororak, just like we said. And when you send out a Pokemon to battle it, it'll easily KO. So the only way you'll know it's a shiny is if if you do engage in these solo battles with Zorark. And once your Pokemon is not able to attack them and starts to be like, oh, nope, I'm not going, I'm not going, that's going to be your clear identifying point that you're going to encounter a shiny Pokemon. So make sure to save beforehand, engage in the battle, and do not run away from the battle. You do not want to run away. Uh, streamers have had problems with running away from Dittos and Zororaks, and it just, don't do it. Don't do that at all. That'll be the safe play. Now, when you're going through this whole entire forest, now I could be missing shinies just for the sake of this video. You're going to be running into those, like I said the Murkrows, Honchkrows, and the Skunky families. And because they're all family Pokemon, the family Pokemon groups, you don't have to worry about. You could just walk right by them. If they spawn as a shiny group, you're good. They will be purple, these guys. And the Skunks will be pink. And the Honchkrows and Murkrows, they will also be pink. So you're looking for pink and purple shinies. That's really what you're looking for in this area. The solo ones will never be shiny. You can just not care about that. But when you are ready to hunt Zororaks, you can go ahead and do that method that we did talk about. But yeah, this is the Zororak hotspot if you're looking specifically to hunt Zororaks. But just those are extra bonus Pokemon that you will encounter while you're here. All right. So in the Asado Desert, uh, this area completely is going to be where you're going to find your Sandiles. And Sandiles are going to be a ground dark Pokemon. Now, they're going to all be in the sand, which is going to make this hunt slightly harder. So you're going to have to really pay attention if you're going to see a lighter yellow color. Here's what the shiny looks like. And you're going to be identifying a lighter color between all the things that you see here. So it's going to make, it's going to be a little difficult as these guys are all squirming in the sound. A good thing that you could use when, when hunting these is the double home click, which is going to allow you to do the zoom in. You can define this on your settings. You could see the difference here between some of them if you happen to get a yellow. I'm going to walk around the area a bit just so you guys are oriented on how we're going to despawn them and respawn them out because they do move pretty well together. Yeah, ideally, 
really what you want to look for is just the much more yellow one on the head. And if you do happen to bump into a solo one and you don't have time to turn around for some reason, you just want to test it out. Send out your Pokemon just to battle it because you'll never be able to KO a shiny. That's the good part about this game. They don't let the shinies get KO'd. So just walk around the desert. Don't go too fast because some of them are single spawns, but the group spawns should be easy to spawn. You can run away from group spawns and you should be able to get your shiny pretty simple. It shouldn't be too hard if you spend a lot of time. All right, so that's pretty much how you're going to get your Sandiles and your Crocorocks right over here in the Sado Desert. Now, if you go inside of the Alphernada cave in Pokemon Scarlet, you're going to have Dinos, Sableyes, and Umbreon spawning in here. But if you're a Violet player, you'll probably just have to deal with Umbreon's and Sableye, which is probably a lot better. So Violet players are going to have it a lot more easier when specifically hunting for these Pokemon. So for Sableyes, we're going to be coming here and hunting and for umbreons now there's a trick for us to get more umbreons and that's going to require us to force a mass outbreak in the area so what you want to do is make sure your sandwich is on being eaten i have my sandwich eaten i'm going to open up my map so we see what's going on here and i'm in the cave in alfernada and what i'm going to do is simply do a date skip until i get my umbreon outbreak <laughs> Okay, first try, first, first actual try with the sandwich. We already got this going. The Umbreon spawn is already a thing. And that would be the way you would try to get your Umbreon spawns pretty quick. And now I'm at the Umbreon mass outbreak. And that is how we're going to simply hunt the Umbreons quick. So just go for 60 knockouts here. And once you have your 60 knockouts, you'll have a better chance at getting the Umbreon shiny to spawn. All right, so if we enter the tag tree thicket, this is for all those people hunting down your Impy Dimps and those trying to get Grim Snarls. This is a dark fairy type Pokemon. So this forest is gonna be full of them. Not only just full of Impy Dimps, but you're also gonna have some Murkrows here. Yeah, so Impy Dimps are pretty much gonna be everywhere in this forest when you're hunting these down. You're also gonna probably get some Murkrows showing up. So so look for pink shinies in the birds. And when you're looking at the impidims, you're going to be looking for the blue shiny. That's what you're going to be looking for. And you can just roam around here. Enjoy yourself in this forest. These guys are going to keep spawning in and out. Don't run too fast. Just run far enough where they all despawn like that. A good group despawns. And then you can rotate your camera, go back, and you get a whole entire other group. There you go. So this is almost a dual hunting spot, but mostly for Impidimp. You just get the little bonus of Murkrows in here. I have caught in a bunch of these Murkrows before, so I'm not so into the, having those Murkrows. That's my most common shiny I've caught in this game. They've also bothered me a lot in legends arceus so i'm actually sick of that shiny i'm not interested in that one so yeah come to this forest if you want to get yourselves impidimp we go over impidimp and mimikyu in the fairy video the next pokemon on our list is going to be sneasel now as you can see we are on the glaciato mountains and the fast teleport that i like to use is glaciato mountain teleport which is right by the pokemon center and this is going to be a good spot for a bunch of families of sneasel but you're also going to be getting some single spawns so when you have single spawns remember you cannot just run past them at full speed because these guys are going to render in slow and you could miss out on a shiny. But you'll also get a good amount of family spawns as well in this area on Glaciato Mountain. And they're pretty much going to be just taking over this mountain because that's just what the game is programmed to do when you boost up this dark sandwich. Since it's a dark ice Pokemon, it's also a very good way of separating, separating out the encounters from the other ice Pokemon. So it's good to use dual types when necessary when doing these spawns for certain Pokemon. Now, there is an easier method or i'd say the more lazy approach and that's going to be all the way at zappa pico west which we're going to fly to right now all right so once you arrive at zappa pico west all you have to do is just step out on this platform and you'll get the notification of dali zappa passage and you will see all these weavile spawn as well as low kicks they're also going to be here so pink shinies and yellow shinies low kicks is going to be yellow weavile's are going to be pink this is mainly for weavile and you just go back into town pop back out and you get a whole new spawn again oh another group also make sure to check the top of the mountain the last thing you want to do is have a shiny show up here and you miss it completely so they're going to spawn up here they're going to spawn down there and that's pretty much it you just keep rinsing and repeating at zappa pico until you get your shiny if you want a nice low kick spot without really anything interfering minus the static weavile this is going to be a good one it's going to be over here located by the Glaciato Mountain Watchtower. And over here is just going to be a bunch of low kicks on this one straight path. 
And all you have to do is really just go down that straight path. They'll just keep spawning. They'll be behind you. They'll be in front of you. Low kicks are everywhere here. Only at nighttime is when it's going to get complicated when you're going to start to have the Hanch Crows and Murkrows show up. But during the day, this should be pretty easy just to run down, have a bunch of low kicks just spawn in. It's the only Pokemon on this path, pretty much, that you have to worry about minus static encounters. If you're in the mood to low kick solo and don't want to deal with anything else, this is a great spot. Okay, I'm literally working on this video. Bunch of dragons on me, and I see a shiny low kicks. <laughs> so yeah, side note, just got this low kicks. Okay. <laughs> Woohoo! For this, we're going to be going to the North Province Area 2. This is going to be a dual hunt because when you have a dark sandwich, you're going to get a mix of as you can. There they are. Here's pretty much what we're hunting here. Low kicks, Bisharps, and Ponyards. These are going to be the number one spawns when you have a dark sandwich. And obviously, it's a little bit better to do a steel sandwich and get a Bisharp only spawn. But if you want to dual hunt both of these at the exact same time, this is the way to go. And so you pop your sandwich and you pretty much just want to take your time and stroll through this bamboo forest or reach another end of it and then once you despawn a group of families out you could just turn around and respawn them back in basically just go back and forth in this area while you're getting your spawns it's probably the best way to get exactly what you want some people might hang around just the pokemon center despawn everything out there wait for them to despawn like that there you go and then they just come back to the same spot and you can hunt them over again and over again so depending on what your style is you can pick a specific spot respawn them despawn them or just walk from this end to the opposite end and these low kicks are very aggressive so just be just be aware low kicks will be coming after you in this game actually they all come after you all these are very aggressive spots okay so we're gonna be going for her shiny skunky and stung tank and this is gonna be pretty easy to identify their shinies are just gonna be a nice pink color and where we're doing this is gonna be at the castle royal lake and we're gonna do our typical philly beats you repetition of just running to a land point and running back and because they are not in single groups spawning uh, they're not single spawns my mistake they're in family groups completely which means a family group is basically like like a big evolution surrounded by babies you can run as fast as you want and you don't have to worry about missing the shiny so run all the way to that end and then turn around when you're ready and just go and you are make your way all the way down to that big rock there and just you know zoom out so you can see everything that's spawning around you sometimes you can zigzag to get some extra spawns here that's pretty much how i got my shiny as soon as i was about to start recording and show that off so that was pretty cool when you're by this lake area you could you know dip a little bit down here get a, a couple extra spawns see what you get zigzag up the more spawns you get the better and for some reason they just and now they're not spawning come on guys this is the video there we go there's a family there's another family there's another family good job and we tap this and you're gonna just rinse and repeat and you'll get your shiny skunk tank just be aware that they can explode on you and that's not good so save beforehand and uh maybe put it to sleep that might be the play all right so to get sable eye you have to teleport right over to this area in the Casaroya lake Castoria Watchtower 1. And then you want to face this rocky area. So it's going to be this big brown thing on your map right here. This giant cave area. And we're just going to head over to it. And the cool part about this is you're always going to get Sable Eyes to spawn in here. It doesn't matter if it's daytime or nighttime. This is going to be a really, really good Sable Eye spot. So if you walk around here, that's all you're going to get. Sable Eyes, Sable Eyes, and tons of Sable Eyes. And the cool part is the shiny is so obvious when you see it. The color is so different. So when you show up on your game you're gonna really notice it and what i like to do is just take a nice simple stroll through the cave reach a point and then once i reach that end point ignore that gibble or gabite keep going down this pathway here i reach that main point and then i just do a loop after that just go back again so you you could either climb up here or just go back basically plot your own path in here but you can just see that there's a good amount of sable eyes in this area just a nice good amount to hunt so good luck with your sable eye let's talk about spirit tomb because this is a ghost dark pokemon and it does have dark in it so how are you gonna hunt this pokemon on, right because you can't get mass outbreaks what you're gonna be doing for this is something known as a date skip because this is a static spawn uh what we're gonna do wow this guy is really okay calm down buddy <laughs> this is a static spawn so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna knock it out just like this there it is it's gone so that spirit tomb no matter what i do should not be able to respawn again so if i back away from its area and if you do come back to that spirit tomb 
it should not show up because you cleared it off the map completely, right? It's not here, it's gone. So the trick to get that spirit tomb back is you want to get away from its location. And for those who really want to waste their time in this game doing this, uh, you're going to plop, like I said, you're going to just plop your save just like that. You're going to completely close out of your game like this. Please note, this does knock off your sandwich and your sandwich is not boosting this static encounter. I just wanted to put it out there that this is how you're going to be hunting for this specific Pokemon. We'll probably do the exact same thing in our ghost video as well. And then once you load back in your game, you're going to head back to that spot once you change your date and we should have our spirit tomb spawned again. And this is going to be a completely new spawn of a spirit tomb. Now, the only issue is it takes forever to load up your game and to come back in it. So I'm going to tell you it's probably better for you just to do a Masuda method, but that's pretty much how you hunt the static spawn of spirit tomb in the game, since that's pretty much the only way. So now you know how to do that. And if you're anti date skipping, then just do Masuda breeding. Just do that. That's the way to get spirit tomb. It's not worth a 1,496 chance for that Pokemon, <laughs> especially with that long of resetting. Okay, so for Pokemon Violet players, you're going to simply come from Research Lab Station 4 and go to our nice new secret spot. So as soon as you come there, jump off. And as soon as you jump off, you're going to right towards these crystals here. This spot right here. This is like the spiciest spot to hunt. And for Iron Jugulus, it's going to be the only one spawning here for you guys. All you have to do is just walk up to this edge here like this. Look straight. See if you see a silver colored iron jugglist. If you don't, back up. They all go away. Nothing. All right, cool. And what do you do again? You show up here. This is officially what I'm going to be talking about for every hunt when it comes to Paradox Pokemon. This rock is amazing if they spawn down here because you don't have to do anything. You don't have to zoom out. You don't have to pay attention a lot. You're just looking for silver. You see how simple this is going back and forth here. And maybe we'll actually get an iron jugglist doing this. By the way, this account on Violet that I have right now is not shiny charmed. We only have our sandwich boosted here. So that's pretty much what I'm doing. So anytime you see a shiny with this purple guy in my on my YouTube videos, that means it's not shiny charmed. And that's pretty much all you have to do for Iron Jugulus. It's pretty easy. You're not looking at anything in the head. You're just looking at the body. So if you do happen to get that shiny, good luck. Yeah, that's pretty much it for Iron Jugulus. So we're going to be heading over to the secret cave area and I'm coming at a research lab station number two. But I just wanted to point out that Brute Bonnet for Pokemon Scarlet players is going to also be a grass dark type we have a better spot for it in our other grass video so go ahead and check that one out but that one is a grass type and a dark type all right so once you arrive in your secret cave you're going to be greeted by a bunch of weaviles or Sneasels. Actually, Sneasels. These are Sneasels. Uh, Sableye is going to be over here. Sableye is also spawn a lot here. And you're going to get Roaring Moon. The problem if you're playing Pokemon Scarlet is that you're going to get Zvelis. And you're going to also get your Roaring Moon spawning down here as well. So it's going to be chaotic with the amount of spawns. So if you're hunting Roaring Moon in particular, you probably want to go with Dragon Sandwich if you're in Pokemon Scarlet. Because that's going to you're going to be added on to having these lovely Sneasels joining you. So Dark Sandwich is probably a horrible sandwich to have when hunting this but i just wanted to put that out there that if you do pop dark sandwich you're basically quadruple hunting you're getting sneasel you're getting roaring moon you're getting sableye and you're getting zvelis so just keep that in mind if you come to this room i just wanted to point that out for everyone who is hunting in scarlet and now you know the best locations to shiny hunt dark pokemon in scarlet and violet make sure to check out this video over here so you can know how to shiny hunt these pokemon come on click it